right now chumming it up with like half the next panel, so I hope they will come out. He's worked with everybody, and they've all worked with everybody. Aww. But let me bring them on out for you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a welcome to Robin Curtis. Woo! Ladies first, right? Anybody know what that song was they were playing? No. I'll no, buy you a beer if you know the song. Yes. What'd you say? Oh, that you get cheap. You're, like, you're, you're in the band. <laughs> Kiss by from Prince, huh? Oh. The best line ever written. Act your age, not your shoe size. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so real fast, Kelsey Grammer back there. Who among you knew him, worked with him before? We were at Juilliard together. Kelsey, Robin Williams, huh? me, uh, Chris Reeve was there. I mean, we just, you know, we were, we got formed all together way back when. Wow. Of course, Kelsey has much more money than all of us, though. So. <laughs> I heard he was buying dinner. He's an exquisite actor and, and a wonderful human being, so I was so happy to see him. And Vaughn? Yeah, I did a couple of, uh, what was this show? Frasers with him. And yeah. A couple of cheers, and we did a show at the Mark Taper Forum, some Shakespeare, yeah. measure for measure. And, you know, he came to my house for dinner once, brought his daughter, came to my house for Father's Day once. Wow. It was, uh, yeah, nice guy. That's great. I All think right, I let's... slept with him in the 80s, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Kelsey, are you still around? Can you confirm this? Well, Robin, you slept with all of us. Come on, in the 80s. I'm kidding. Oh. It's a joke. Oh. It's a joke. I'm going to change the subject very slowly. <laughs> Let's get everybody caught up. How have each of you been riding out the pandemic? Max, why don't we start with you and go down the line? What's the question? How have you been riding out the pandemic? Riding, Hanging out at home. You're riding out working. the pandemic. Um, mm, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. What? What have you been doing? Tell us. N nothing. Uh, That's a great answer. Uh, nothing. Well, we, we, you know, we don't live here. We, we uh, live in... Uh, I know where you live. Where do I live? Austria? Yeah, we live in Austria. Austria. We live in Austria, there's not much going on there. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh... God, is this, people gonna see this from, this is gonna be, this is video that's gonna go online, right? And people are gonna see. Absolutely. Just you. <laughs> uh, no, we're good, we're good. We, we, uh, we, this, this is the first time, uh, Thursday, to get here, was the first time I have flown anywhere in two years. Mm -hmm. wow. So, um, so I flew. Just to see, to see you all. To yeah. see you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Um, Casey, um, how about you? Uh, the pandemic, uh, I wrote it out. I, I, uh, I, took, I wrote a, a script, uh, and I shot two really big uh, projects, which are coming out next year. One is uh, uh, the Colin Kaepernick story. You guys know who he is? Woo! Sure. And then another one is a David O. Russell film with every major star in the universe in it. So that was great, and uh, I, I actually enjoyed it. I did have COVID last Thanksgiving. I quarantined for two weeks, and it, luckily it was uh, a mild case. Got my shots, which is great, and uh, hopefully we all pay attention and we'll move right out of this. So, wow. How about you, Mark? Ah, okay. <coughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on... Uh, I did a lot of work in my house and my property. Uh, I'm always creating something. 
Um, I built myself a studio, not during the not during the, the, the COVID, but I'm always working on it and improving it. So I did some work on that too. Got this wonderful studio I built. Uh, I'm always working with my hands and with my head. I make wonderful lamp sculptures. Uh, geez, what else have I done? It's about it. I haven't. I'm, I mean, I'm so out of the loop in terms of the biz. I could care less what's going on. I'm, you know, I'm retired and I got my own life now. And I can do anything I want, anywhere I want, anytime I want. And you're here with us right now. More than you ask. And I earned it. That's the great part. I earned it all. So I'll pass it on to you, darling. Catch. Um, so, yeah, I live in a sleepy, darling little lake uh, community called Casanova, southeast of Syracuse. And I, I mean, nothing would tell you sooner that you don't like your environment than being stuck in it all the time. I, but I love my 200-year-old house. And I make nice meals for myself when I worked out throughout the pandemic. I, I was glued to the television for so many reasons and was waiting for the cavalry to come. It came, thank God. Um, uh, and and uh, pe people that I can bear to listen to tell the truth or telling the truth and, and, and that made a huge difference to me uh, at least in terms of my you know, state of mind um, uh, 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 I, and I, I, I could be a great invalid because I love to binge Netflix and Hulu and all these wonderful things and, and even though I'm in sleepy upstate New York guys when I see you and stuff I'm cheering for you I'm rooting for you all of my former acting uh, colleagues um, uh, I'm tickled pink to be here and grateful that creation created a safe space for us for the most part as, as well as we can measure, right? Yeah. So all together. Woo! And um, that's about it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, like Mark, I've been doing a lot of work on my hundred year old house and trying to get it up to par so that it doesn't fall down. And, uh, you know, you don't know it's broken to the brakes. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and, and it always breaks. breaks. Yeah, at some point. But uh, also, my kids, uh, I have two, two sons who are doing great. My youngest just got a Geico commercial, so be watching for him. <laughs> yeah, my oldest did this painting that is now on this shirt. Wow. This is a damn good shirt, ain't it? His, his son is one of the most extraordinary artists, and uh, thank goodness he's... Yeah, he did. Take your jacket off and show him the shirt. Uh, well, that's tough because well, my, left okay, hand, my, <laughs> my left hand has no back. But uh, also, my, my kids gave me a, a projector, uh, and my wife bought me a big screen, and we put it up in the backyard, and we watched movies through COVID with a bunch of friends, you know, two, two or three couples at a time. Spent a lot of time in the backyard with the movies. And uh, that's, uh, that's about it. To just watching movies, working on the house, and playing with my kids. And how, how do you project the movies? How, what do you use to project? It's, it's, a, it's a regular, uh, you, you know, it's on Wi-Fi, so we just put it on the, is it uh, Hulu? It's a simple matter, huh? Y yeah. Is it simple? And it, you shoot it either in front or behind the screen, and it's about an eight foot by six foot screen. Right. So it's like being at the movies. Right. But he only watches movies that he's in. There you go. Uh, that won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's about it, actually. And Gary, how about you? But Vaughn, you have friends? Well, oh. a lot of them on this stage, Gary. Except, I thought there was just me. But uh, I, I, I know what you're talking about, the backyard uh, uh, movie night with the projection screen. I've, I've uh, had a couple of those, too. Those are great. It's a great way to spend the COVID thing. COVID? What a bunch of crap that is, all right. I mean, I, it's just, it's upon us, it's making people sick, it's ravaging, now it's, uh, it, it's going into a deviant, uh, another, another strain of, uh, uh, you know, now you gotta get a booster, what a, what a, what a bad thing that is. So uh, I, I, I just kind of broke my heart, the whole thing about COVID. Um, but you know what? We're, 
our, our bodies are resilient. We can, you know, it's, uh, the vaccines, all that good stuff, it's great. But uh, uh, our immune system is just going to kick ass on the COVID and it's going to be done in uh, another six months. Tops. I want That's my hope. I'm, anyway, I'm hoping. I love it. True. I love it. I've been. Uh, I've been. Oh, I, I, I had a friend who owns a uh, a condo in Maui, and which is a good friend to have. Let me tell you. Now, we hooked up at a high school reunion or something, and uh, and he uh, out of the blue called me up, and said, "Gary, you would like to go Maui, Maui for I don't know up to two months, uh, free of charge." I go, "Let me think about that." Okay, yeah. So uh, before I know it, my wife and I are on, on a plane to Maui, and we spent seven weeks in Maui, in Kihei, Maui, and, and I think we had to pay 20 bucks a day for electricity or something like that. <laughs> Jeez. Totally what, a, what, a, what a beautiful, we had to do a 14-day quarantine, of course, uh, but after that, just had a run on the island, and wow, what a, what a, and then, as luck would have it, just as I got back, I got a call from my agent said I got a job waiting for me in Louisiana. So I flew off to do uh, this four-day four -day job in Louisiana, real quick shoot, and uh, it paid for the whole vacation and then some. And uh, gee, that was oh, and then, then my wife meets this uh, uh, this this real estate agent. She's talking a good game about what our house will be worth, and you know you should think about because we've been thinking about moving, but. Uh, Put it up on the market. Uh, seven days later, I had 13 offers, and boom, we were out of there. And uh, looked around for property, and ended up moving up to Spokane, Washington, Spokane Valley, Washington. Right. So now I'm a, a Washingtonian, and, and couldn't be happier. It's a beautiful area, gorgeous area, um, and uh, what they call traffic there, <laughs> I laugh at. Come on. Wow, no, it, it's just uh, it's just really beautiful, and the people are swell. And uh, oh, we just love it. So that's what I've been doing. That's great. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to open this up in a little while for questions. So if you want to. But I'm dying to ask something here. Go ahead. How many of you people have had your shots? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, here's to you. Right. Wash long and prosper. That's what I say. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I've got three or four questions for each of you. And I'm just going to start with ladies first, of course. Robin, speaking of real estate, you are a realtor these days. I am. So take me through how the pandemic, I don't want to focus on the pandemic too much, but it's a real estate question, how it's affected your job, showing people the places, and I'm assuming prices have probably skyrocketed, right? Well, uh, yes, all, pretty much all of the above. I mean, it changed my industry dramatically because we could no longer meet clients in person. So, so imagine trying to sell a house where the client can't go inside the house uh, and, and it has to be sold virtually, meaning I could go in with my mask and my gloves and so on, all sterilized, and, and, and do sort of a WhatsApp or a, or a FaceTime with the client, but the client couldn't go in. And this is how we bought and sold houses for months. So it was a little insane, but I'll tell you, um, we did it. <laughs> people, people came to, to the process with a good spirit, and, and we did everything we could to give them confidence to build properties they weren't able to physically stand in. Um, and we got it done. Um, even to this day, it's still affecting my business. I don't make cold calls, but as long as New York State is in a state of emergency, uh, real estate agents are not allowed to call people unsolicited, which is really not such a bad thing, right? Less, one less phone call coming your way. Uh, right? um, but, to, but for some realtors, you know, that, that, eats, that eats into their bread and butter. Um, I did really well during the pandemic. I'm almost a little embarrassed to say that um, uh, because I had clients that needed to sell and or clients who needed to buy. Things have quieted down a little bit in my market, but um, if you have somebody helping you do it, even though the market's a little crazy right now, you can trust them to help you not overpay uh, to get you a good house. So, so don't lose faith in, in real estate, um, but you, you know, pick somebody good who can kind of guide you through the process. I treat my clients like family. Where do you sell? Where do you practice real estate? I, I am in Syracuse, New York, upstate, uh, and I can do pretty much a seventy-mile radius around the. the, the <laughs> Look her up online, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. So this is staying with you, you, Robin, many fans consider you "quote unquote" their Sovic. Yeah. What does it mean yeah. to you to hear that? Well, it's, it, it's 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 very kind, and it, and, it, and it warms my heart. I I. Uh, I don't say this to, to solicit a compliment at all, but I, I, I was never really terribly confident in, in how I pulled that off. 
Uh, if you meet me personally, come to my table, please say hi. You don't have to buy anything. Um, you know, you'll learn. I'm just not remotely savic like I nothing unemotional about me, nothing stoic about me. Uh, I'm pretty transparent. And, and it, I, I thought it was almost the height of cruelty that Leonard Nimoy cast me in the role. Uh, uh, but, but I did my best. He directed me very closely, kept his promise. And together we created what you see. So, so if you happen to like it, that's wonderful. I, I think I learned that, you know, a character is the collaboration of the director and the actor. And uh, Kirstie and Nicholas Meyer came up with another interpretation to the character. Both are good. There's room for all. Uh, and for those of you who say uh, that you missed me in the next movie, I would respond that there's only so much room in the movie for everybody. So we can't all go along all the time. Uh, I'm tickled pink with the run that I did have uh, and really appreciated coming back and, and getting a juicy, a juicy uh, little part in uh, The Next Generation. Lots of fun. I mean, you guys know how that is. Back in the day, 20 years ago, you were asking me when I would be on The Next Generation, like it was just simply a matter of placing a phone call. And we had to audition just like everybody else, right? I mean, it's not, it's not like you're in the club just because you were, did a Star Trek uh, or were part of the franchise. So, so it's, it's, it's sweet to sort of, you know, uh, be able to be, uh, have more stories to tell and be engaged in, in, in a, you know, a deeper way with all of you. And not to, no pun intended, but the David is deadline still kills me every time. Take me through doing that without conveying emotion at all, just in the sense of it's such a sensitive line. It, how do you hide it from your eyes? How do you hide it from your face? I get the voice, but the other parts. I, 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 honestly, I was befuddled by the whole moment. To, to me, that was where the most poignancy was needed, and uh, Leonard, literally, uh, you guys know that giving someone a line reading would probably be insulting, right? But it wasn't to me. It wasn't when he did it with me. Um, not, not that he did so on that particular line in that particular moment, but he definitely had me say it enough times that I was practically flatlining, you know, by the end. And I thought, you, you know, who better to trust than Leonard Nimoy when it comes to the nuances of a, of a Vulcan character? So I wasn't going to question it, but it, 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 was, it was hard. It was hard. I felt terribly constipated and robotic and, <laughs> and, and and it just was contrary to everything you know we had all been ever taught which is to sort of be be transparent and 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 uh, bring bring emotion to the scene type of thing so anyway it, it, it is what it is <laughs> thank you mark let me move to you you played the very first Cardassian that we fans of Star Trek mm. saw how much of a hand do you feel you had in creating one of the franchises Best antagonistic species. Oh. What was his name? Gon Massette. Gon Massette, that's right. <laughs> First kind of here. And it was it was almost like a probationary thing. I got a thing in my mouth here. Thanks, Casey. Uh, <laughs> it was it was <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Golden Set was the first guy to ask you, and I didn't like him, I didn't like him at all, I didn't like the makeup, I didn't like the character that much, but it was work, and I evidently did a pretty good job with it, they liked it, and the interesting thing is that there was another actor, I'm not going to say his name, I better not. <laughs> but we were we were really good friends at one point. But then we separated, you know, as life goes. But then he was going to do Call to Cot. And he, he shot one show, and they said it's not going to work. Because I did nine years of Shakespeare when I was a young actor. So I had a great voice, and I knew how to use words, knew how to say words. He didn't. So I got called to cop. One of my favorite characters of all time. Right. That's good. Now I wanted to ask you about the cop. Cisco described him as, quote unquote, truly evil. To your thinking. Oh, no, Is that right or wrong? That's bullshit. <laughs> they were trying to make Ducat the Nazi on the show. And I wasn't gonna have it. You know, he was not the saint. 
But he was not a Nazi, for Christ's sake. And I don't know what that jerk-off was all about. <laughs> but I think once they realized that I could go all kinds of ways with the character, they began to relax and, and you know, gave me some freedom to develop the character the way I wanted to develop it. And I did. Hey. And you all liked him. And that's what's really important. Now, obviously, he had the hots for Kira. And I wanted to ask, to your thinking, what did he see in her? Big mistake. What did he see in her? What was he attracted to? Was it physically? Was it her mind? Was it her... Are there children in the audience? Yes. Yeah. yes. PG version, please. Huh? PG version, please. G version. There is no G version. Um, oh man, I could do an hour on that one, but. Uh, gee, I don't know what to say about I mean, she was a very attractive woman. Microphone. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I, I once played a character, Malvolio in Shakespeare, um, Twelfth Night, and somebody referred to him as Spider Man because I had three inch heels. I was like, very dandy, you know. And I referred to her as Spider Woman when I first saw her. I didn't know her, but I just thought of her because she had that movement thing. I don't know what else to say about her, really. Okay. okay. And then you played multiple other roles on Star Trek. Which I, I wanted us to turn into something. Definitely. I think they would have loved it if no. No. we had turned into something. No. No. You know, in terms of drama and, you know, uh, showbiz and all that. The two of them could have done something on, that would have turned everything around. Let's ask the audience. Who wanted to see Ducat and Kira hook up? No. 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 Tastes great, less filling. I get that. That's what's happening here. All right. She put the kibosh on it, so it never happened. No worries. All right, you've played multiple other roles on across Star Trek. Which other ones did you actually like the most? You had Vidar, you had Tamak, you had Frederick LaRoque was a great role. Huh? LaRoque was a great role. Oh, yeah, yeah, I liked him. The French gambler, that was cool. They gave me a really nice wig. I, had a, I think I had a slanty hat on. And I think I had a mustache. It's hard to remember. But I liked him because his character, there were a couple cowboys uh, bullying this this man. I think it was Indian. I can't remember. But they were bullying him, and the Frenchman stood up for him and told him to cut it out. But I think they cut that out of the the final show. I don't know why. But I love that moment. So I never got a chance to do that much heroic stuff. Okay. Goodbye. I just want to say. I just want to say. I think the reason Mark Alimo was so brilliant as Ducat is because in, in Ducat's mind, he was the hero of the show. Yeah, yeah. He played it as yep. the hero of the show. Absolutely. And that's how brilliant that, that was, I think. There you go. Vaughn, let's move to you. If you could have been as successful as a musician as you are as an actor, would you make that trade or no? Mm -hmm. No, no, move that on to Vaughn. Oh, Unless you sing also. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Why not? I would not have made that trade. Well, I might now <laughs> because I'm really enjoying the music a whole lot more and I've done acting, you know, since I was 16. I'm 71 now and uh, it's kind of what I do. It's who I am. Acting is who I am. 40 years. Yeah, 40, 44 years like that. Tell them what we did together first. Oh yeah, we did uh, Twelfth Night, wasn't it, together? At, in uh, at the John Anson Ford Theater. At the outdoor yeah. theater, it was really beautiful. Big, big place. And yeah. then we worked at the Globe together too, didn't we? Well, I, yeah. I did Julius Caesar there. Yeah, and I, I took the place of Brutus after you guys left. I got to play Brutus. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, a lot of fun. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And uh, uh, now I've come to love music as much as I love acting, but that's only because, uh, you know, acting is ingrained with me. Do I love it like I used to? No, I don't, because it used to totally 
and rap me, you know, everything I did was about acting until I had kids. <laughs> and then it was just about making money any way I could. And fortunately, acting did that for me. You know, uh, uh, Enterprise helped me put my kids through college. Right. You know? And that was very important. Uh, that, uh, that's what I like best about that show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And look what it did for them. Huh? Yeah. What it did. And like I said, my youngest just got, uh, he, he's a producer, director, actor. And he just got a Geico commercial, so watch out for him. He's a pretty, pretty cool guy. And then, uh, Vaughn, you appeared as 12 different characters across 28 episodes of four different Star Trek series. Who liked your work so much? Was it Berman? Was it Junie Lowry? Was it the various directors who kept insisting we must have this guy? <laughs> well, first it was Elisa Goodman who was Junie Lowry Johnson's assistant casting director. And uh, she brought me out because uh, I had done a production of Dracula that uh, she saw me in, and she loved that so much, she started casting me, and then she brought me into Junie. And, uh, you know, I had to audition for probably the first six. After that, uh, I didn't. They called me and say, Vaughn, you, you wanna do this? And, so she transferred that passion about me to the rest of the production company, to all of them, Rick Berman in particular. And, uh, you know, they kind of became a family to me. I, uh, I'm very pleased that it worked out the way it did, I can't tell you. And now you guys have all become a family to me, really. We've been doing this for 20 years. And the Rat Pack, has become many of my best friends. The best friends that I have is in the Rat Pack. You guys seen the Rat Pack? You guys seen the Enterprise Blues Band? Yeah! yeah. yeah we got a new album. Yeah! We got a new one, finally. But, uh... We, you know, we're, we're on to Sunday evening, 7.30 is the Rat Pack show. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, so I'm, more people can come see it because it's usually on around 10 o'clock, yeah, right? 9 30, yeah. This time it's uh, 7 30. Vaughn, I don't know if they know, but you have played more different Star Trek alien species than any other actor ever. Is that, the, is that uh, true? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been great fun for the last 30 some years. <laughs> Vaughn, which of the 12 that you played on Star Trek did you find the most interesting? Was there one that you just said, hey, if I could play one of these characters again, this is the one I would want to play? Ah, that's a hard question, because they were all very interesting in different ways. But I would say the in-the-mirror-darkly captain of the Enterprise. Thank you. Because I got to do the, the prologue at the beginning, you know, and got to uh, uh, make out with Linda Park for the first six hours of shooting. <laughs> that, that, that was pretty interesting. So I would say that character was the most fun for me. And then if my facts are right, you auditioned for the role of Riker. So A, what do you remember of that process? And as far as you know or knew, how close did you come to getting that role? Well, uh, they had me back a couple of times, but uh, after that, Judy said, I'm gonna bring Vaughn in for this uh, Klingon, you know, in, in uh, Heart of Glory. And they said, no, you know, we've seen him. Don't, don't, don't bother. So I don't think I came that close to getting Riker. But then uh, Judy brought me in anyway, and I did this audition. And I walked out, this is kind of funny, I walked out of the room and uh, uh, Lisa, you know, uh, accompanied me out of the room and she said, with all the other guys there auditioning for the role, she said, they loved you! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the other guys, uh, then she said, all right, you're next. And the guy said, why? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the whole group kind of became